All right, folks, we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, we might have a few stragglers uh, that, that join us a little late, and that's fine. But for those of us who, uh, who are logged in, we will uh, end the anticipation and the wait. Uh, my name is uh, Greg Dario. I work with the Ativo Group, and I just want to thank everyone for joining us this morning. Um, some of you might already know us. Some of you don't. Uh, we are a McCola, re McCola reseller uh, based in Orange County, California. Uh, we have resources spread out across the entire country. Uh, collectively, our team has well north of 100 years of collective experience in the McCola space, and we're always looking for ways to try and improve the functionality and the user experience uh, of McCola for our clients and just, just in general. Um, one of the ways that we do that is through informational webinars like the one that we're presenting today. Uh, today, we've teamed up with one of our business partners, Century Business Solutions, uh, to talk about credit card processing, uh, PCI compliance, and data security, and ultimately what your risk and liability is. Um, it's a hot-button topic. Um, it seems every other week there is some major news story about a, a hack and, and financial data being compromised. Um, so we feel this is an important topic. Uh, today we're really excited to have Bryce Benicos and Steve Wilson from Century Business Solution. Um, both of these guys are thought leaders and industry experts, and they have a really great presentation lined up for everyone today. Um, before I hand the mic off, I just want to handle a few logistical items. Uh, today's webinar will be about 30 to 40 minutes, followed by some time for Q&A. Uh, if you look at your screen, uh, you should at the top see um, a little green bar. And if you hover over that, there'll be a chat option. And if you click on that chat option at any point during the uh, during the webinar, if you have a question, uh, feel free to type that type that into the chat box. I'll be monitoring that throughout the entire presentation. Um, and then when Bryce and Steve wrap up, we're also going to open up everyone's phone lines, and we can have a more direct Q and A session as well. Um, so. With all that taken care of, oh, and one other thing, we are recording the webinar, so uh, if anyone after the call is interested in um, getting a copy of the video, we should have all the files downloaded and converted um, by tomorrow afternoon, um, and we'll make those available to you, and we can make the slide deck available to you guys as well. Um, so with all that out of the way, I'm going to go ahead and pass the mic off to our esteemed guest speakers. Um, I'll let them kind of introduce Century Business Solutions. Um, and then they can get this party started. So, Bryce, Steve, take it away. It's actually Bryce who's going to start off. I'm Bryce. I'm one of the senior business relationship managers here at Century. Uh, so a little bit of background on, on Century. Uh, we manage a book of, of merchant accounts. Uh, we have about six to 8,000 current accounts with us. And uh, they processed over $2.5 billion last year in uh, credit cards. So. We're not a huge company, we're not a small company, somewhere in the middle, but our niche in the industry is our software integrations. So we're a technology-based merchant service provider, and what we focus on is integrating your accounting system or ERP with how you can accept credit card payments inside of the software. So we ran into the Ativo Group uh, back in December of 2012 at a Sage Roadshow here in Irvine, and we started talking to them about their Sage clients, and then we turned the the discussion fairly quickly over to Exact Macola, and at that point we didn't really know a whole lot about the software. We had heard of it. We knew it was an, an ERP, but we didn't know how deep into it we were going to get at that point. So we got our bosses involved. The uh, developers on our staff started scratching their heads. And next thing you know, we found out that Exact McCola does not have a PCI compliant credit card solution for Exact McCola. So we have a proprietary gateway called eBiz Charge, and we use that as a plug-in to all of our other in integrations we have, such as Sage, QuickBooks, NetSuite, uh, Navision, just to name a few. And the goal here is to show you how we can keep your credit card data safe 
and uh, secure as well as keep you processing in a PCI compliant environment. So Visa and MasterCard don't tack on extra fees or fines for you having a breach of your data. So this is also eBiz charge is a replacement for PC charge, and we'll get into more about that in a little bit, but a brief warning, PC charge does have an end life set for October 1st of this year, so we're less than two months away from PC charge not even being an option. So us giving you a PCI compliant solution for exact Macola, bringing tokenization into the mix, um, this will give you the data security that you need to keep all your card information safe. So we're going to talk about that here to go over the agenda on the data security and what we're going to talk about. I'm going to turn it over to Stephen at this point to discuss that. Thank you, Bryce. And hello, everybody. This is Stephen, also a Senior Business Relationship Manager with Century. Uh, we have a very straightforward agenda for our webinar today. Um, first, we're going to be sharing some facts about data security, payment security with you all as it relates uh, specifically to credit card payments. We're also going to dive into the big buzzword, the term PCI compliance, what it really means, and how you can ensure that you're in compliance with PCI standards. PCI, for those that don't know, and we'll jump more into this later, PCI stands for the payment card industry. This is a, uh, an association of Visa, MasterCard, Discover, and American Express, and these are standards that those card brands have established to ensure that customer credit card data is protected. Okay. And some of the subcategories we'll be diving into within PCI compliance, we'll talk about those specific security standards. Um, Bryce is going to join us again in a few minutes to talk about choosing the right payment gateway in order to keep yourself in PCI compliance. We'll talk about the ways that credit card information is secured and protected from hackers, including encryption and tokenization. And of course, we'll talk about software integration. For those of you who are Macola users, you'll want to know how this ties back into your Macola system and how your data can be protected within Macola. Okay? We'll also dive into um, some specifics of the payment gateway and how our specific integration that we've developed with the Ativo Group works. And then, like Greg mentioned at the beginning of the call, at the very end here, once we've completed the presentation, we'll open up the floor to some question and answer time. Okay. Now, fortunately for us, unfortunately for you, <laughs> credit card payments aren't going anywhere. Credit cards, as we all know, are a very convenient payment method for consumers. I use them every chance I have. I'm sure most of us on this call are the same way. And for the businesses that are purchasing product from you, when they're paying their invoices down, their mindset a lot of times is why not swoop up that free cash back, take the miles, the points, the rewards that their bank is offering them as an incentive to use that credit card. They're going to pay off a $50,000 invoice for some equipment they might be purchasing from you why would they give you a check payment for $50,000 when they can get one, two, even up to five or six percent cash back on that transaction that they can reinvest in their business, right? So it makes sense from the customer standpoint why they want to use credit cards. And we're seeing that credit card usage, while always a very large part of the retail environment, right, whenever you go to Target or you go to Walmart or you go to the grocery store or the supermarket, uh, credit cards have always been common there since their introduction. It's very convenient for someone to swipe their credit card. But we're starting to see it more and more in the card not present world. We're starting to see that manufacturers and distributors and suppliers and people who do wholesale business, um, whereas in the past this wasn't really uh, as much of an issue, suddenly more and more of the businesses that you do business with are starting to pay you with credit cards as their form of payment. And we put together a little graphic here where you can see the growth that's anticipated over just the next three years, just three years. Total U.S. credit card payments are expected to grow from $4 trillion to over $9 trillion, $9.4 trillion, just over the next three years. Two-thirds of all purchases made in the United States are going to be paid by credit card. It's an astonishing number. I mean, $4 trillion to $9.4 trillion. So if credit cards are not a huge part of your business right now, 
they will grow and it will become a more sizable part of your business and that's a large part of why talking about data security and making sure that you're not the next target, you're not the next Lowe's, you're not the next Home Depot, all uh, major companies that were recently hacked and lost sensitive credit card data, that's why it's so important to learn how not to fall victim to that same fate. Okay. Fraudsters love us. And we're talking about the United States. Trust me, a sales guy would never come up with a pun that bad. I apologize. Um, but the point remains that credit card usage in the United States does not correlate the same way to credit card fraud and uh, data hacking compared to the rest of the world. Right? In the United States, we're only accounting for about 25% of credit card usage in the world. Yet 40% of all credit card fraud happens here. It's disproportionate. And there are a number of reasons why that is the case. A large reason for this is that payment solutions here in the U.S. have been slow to catch up with new techniques that are being used by these cyber criminals. For example, Bryce alluded to the PC Charge Exact Macola credit card integration. It's a perfect example. The developer of PC Charge is fully discontinuing the product and all support, as Bryce mentioned, on October 1st. For many reasons, in part though, because the software lacks the robust fraud protection tools that's needed today. When a credit card transaction is run, especially when you don't physically have that card present in your hand, you're not standing with a customer in your office, you're talking to them on the phone, perhaps the order's coming through the internet or they're faxing you their credit card order, you need to have some way to protect that data against someone who could very easily intercept it from your software. Okay, so that's the first reason is solutions have not really done a good job here in the U.S. of keeping up with fraud. And when fraudsters see an opportunity, they strike. And they see weakness in our system as it's developed in the U.S. right now. We're also on the retail side of things, the last country to adopt EMV. Uh, and a good amount of fraud is occurring in the retail space. Those examples I gave earlier, Home Depot, Lowe's and Target, those are all retail establishments, right? So customers were swiping their credit cards and hackers got access to that full credit card information and took it. Um, we'll talk a little bit in more detail right now about EMV and how that affects the retail world. Um, and then we're gonna also dive into card not present and you know, exactly what the impact's gonna be on that, okay? So EMV, what is EMV? EMV is a buzzword that's being thrown around by credit card processing companies, banks. Um, it's even used in some cases as a scare tactic. So let, let's cut through some of the white noise and talk about exactly what EMV really is. Okay? Most of you have noticed the new electronic chip implanted in your newly issued credit and debit cards. EMV is the standard currently in Europe and Canada. It stands for European MasterCard Visa. Now, with EMV, it's much more difficult for hackers to obtain credit card data. The reason for that is when you swipe your credit card, the magnetic strip is being read by that terminal or that device that's swiping, that you're swiping the credit card through. It's very easy for a hacker to get access to that device and pick up that magnetic strip every time it's swiped through the device. Right? With the electronic chip, there's a unique indicator in each electronic EMV chip on each card, and it's much more difficult for a hacker to actually gain access to all of those unique indicators. Okay? Now, the, but the most important takeaway for Exact Macola users is that EMV, although it is very, very important in reducing some of that fraud that comes from stripe, swiping the magnetic strips, it's going to have little to no impact whatsoever on your business. There are companies out there that use Exact Macola that maybe have two sides to their business, right? They will have a, a retail front and they'll also do some wholesale type business on the back end, which they take phone orders and internet orders for. For the most part though, most Exact Macola users are manufacturers or their distributors or their suppliers and they're taking phone orders. They don't really have that retail component. For those of you that have a retail component, we're more than happy to talk with you at the end of the phone call to go through EMV in a little more detail as that would apply to your business. But we're going to assume for the most part, most of your transactions are going to be done in a card not present manner. For card not present transactions, EMV has no impact whatsoever. Now, 
this is a good thing, this is also a bad thing. It's a good thing because you don't really need to worry about uh, purchasing new hardware, new equipment to put yourself in compliance with the new EMV mandates coming into effect on October 1st. However, it's bad news based on what we saw in Europe and Canada. Uh, at the bottom, there's a statistic there. In Europe, the rate of card not present fraud, fraud on credit card transactions conducted over the phone or online, increased by 70% after they introduced EMV. In Canada, it was even higher. It was 90% increase in card not present fraud. And the reason for this is very clear, right? If by making credit card fraud more difficult when the transaction is card present, data hackers and criminals adapted and moved to the card not present space and became more heavily involved there to try to take customer credit card data, right? Which puts all of our businesses under great risk and makes it even more important that we have a PCI compliant solution that's designed to protect against them. Okay. Now, <clears throat> we're going to dive right into PCI compliance and choosing the right payment gateway. I'm going to talk briefly about PCI compliance and what that entails. Um, so let's talk in some more detail about what PCI compliance really is. Okay. We gave the example a couple times now of Home Depot, Target, and Lowe's. Before these incidences started occurring with more regularity, PCI compliance wasn't as much of a hot topic. Now it's very much in the news, and there's a lot of ambiguity around PCI compliance, and, and we deal with this on a day-to-day -day basis. Some of our own customers have questions about PCI compliance, and we are constantly educating and helping them to understand fully what's expected of them. Okay. So some of the requirements of the new PCI DDS 3.0 security standards is that you need to build and maintain a secure network within your business. You need to protect your customer's cardholder data. Now that's, it takes two forms, right? You have to protect their data at rest when you're not actually charging a credit card, when you're storing that credit card information for future purchase. And you also need to make sure you're protecting that data when you're actually transacting the card. Okay. Um, also, it's expected that you as a business, by accepting credit cards, will regular, regularly monitor and test your networks and that you'll maintain a security policy. Okay. So with that being said, choosing the right payment gateway is going to be the second key factor in making sure that your data security is safe. And I'm going to reintroduce Bryce. He's going to come back on now to talk about how to choose the right payment gateway. Thank you, Stephen. I appreciate it. And um, in this space, a lot of merchants, of course, are processing through a, a payment gateway in some way, shape, or form. So choosing the right one is often hard to, to do. There are a lot of choices. I mean, Authorize.net, Payflow Pro, those are very big and popular ones. Uh, but just so you know, too, not every payment gateway is uh, secure. Um, Really, in the encryption of cards and the tokenization of cards is really the only true way to keep your card information safe. So we're going to talk a little bit more about what encryption and um, tokenization means here. So encryption is the process of encoding messages. Uh, so only the authorized party, the person that ran the card, can read it and know what it is. So, for instance, if we were to run a credit card through Exact McCola, okay, you would hand key the credit card information in, click the process payment button. The EBIS charge gateway, which is the module that we plug into it, would immediately encrypt the card data. So it's no longer a card number, address, name on the card, security code, etc. And then what it does is it creates what's called a token to be sent back into Exact Macola to be stored. So the information being stored inside of Exact Macola is just a token and we have an identifier with the token as the type of card it was plus the last four of the card. So for instance, if it's a Visa card ending in four, five, six, seven, the identifier for that card is Visa four, five, six, seven. That way for your repeat orders, when your customer calls you back and wants to order, you can say, hey, John Doe, I have on file here that you have a card, 
uh, Visa card in 4927 or 4567. Do you want to use the card we have here on file? And then they can say yes, and you can process that credit card payment again without having to rekey the card information. So the token that's stored is just kind of a random series of letters and numbers, and then we can uh, add a, a name to it, so an identifier, so you know what type of card it is. So it's not looking like a jumbled mess, and you can say, oh, I don't know which credit card you want to charge because we have six different ones here. It's just a random series of uh, uh, numbers and letters. So it's an identifier, so we're able to choose the card and process that card for you more efficiently. So all the card information, as you can see, is basically lost as soon as you enter it. Um, we, as a credit card processor, can never unlock the full card number again. The merchant can never unlock the full card number. The customer can. It is locked and the key is thrown away. So you can't do anything with it after you enter it other than rerun that same card again. Um, talk a little bit more about how the software integration works. I kind of mentioned that you would process the transaction inside of Exact Macola. Uh, we have solutions to Exact Macola as well as Sage and QuickBooks and a lot of the larger accounting softwares and ERPs out there. And basically, they all function the same way in terms of you as a merchant are going to create a sales order and then apply a payment to it. So whether it's at the sales order stage, uh, order entry stage, the invoicing stage, um, like a cash a receipt on a payment, a receive payment, outstanding AR, at whatever stage during your process you're going to charge a card, you'll be able to. And we built our module to pop up inside of the native screens within Exact Macola. So at that point, you're ready to charge the card. You can either choose a card on file that a customer has used in, in the past. Every time you run a card, it, it'll save it. Or you can enter a new card information. So when you enter the new card information, you process the payment, and you get an instant approval on the screen. As you can see here, that the transaction was approved. It returns an authorization code and a um, um, reference number. So you're able to see that it's an actual transaction and it's approved. So being able to do that to apply a credit card payment inside the software means you're not going to have to go when you're ready to run a card to your terminal, to your virtual terminal or online gateway, process the card, then go back inside of it, Exact Macola and post payment. When you run your sale inside of Exact Macola, what it does is it sends your sale to your batch within EBIS charge to settle at the end of the day so the money goes to your bank account as well as post payment to that invoice and to your GL. So when you run your update at the end of the day, it'll mark the invoice as paid and show in there and uh, be able to keep track of it on, on your end when you're posting. Another interesting part of this too is of course it's encrypted, it, it's tokenized, all the information is secure, but we don't just pass the credit card number and the name on the card and the expiration date through the point of sale. We're pulling all the information we have, the invoice number, the shipping information, the billing information, um, if there's a, a description code, so we're passing all the line item details as well. And when we do this and we pass all that information through the point of sale, we're able to achieve the lowest possible interchange cost that Visa MasterCard will give. So your cards are going to qualify at the lowest rates. So we know that by using our solution, we can save you money as well on your fees. Why do you want to choose EBIS Charge um, as opposed to another payment gateway out there? EBIS Charge, it's easy to use. It's got great functionality. Um, a lot of our merchants call it Easy Biz Charge because it's so easy to, to use. Um, once again, we're going over it's PCI compliant. It encrypts and tokenizes all the card information. And there are things that we'll get into, I think, on the next slide, too, that will show you some of the 
uh, other features we have as far as you can view your batch in real time throughout the day. So anytime you want to log in, you can log in and see every transaction you ran for that day. Um, it has 45 different search criteria to where it's kind of like a, a, a Google search. You can type a customer name in. It'll show you every transaction that John Doe ran since you, since you started processing with you. It's got unlimited batch history, so you can go back four or five years, pull any batch that's ever been settled, and see every transaction that's been run. It's easy to issue credits and voids in there. You just go in and have, there's a quick credit button next to every transaction. Um, it's got customizable reporting tools, so if you want a customized report emailed to you at the end of each day, you can go in and create the report to look and feel however you want it to, to help with your, you know, settling the bank account and matching up to make sure everything posted right. And of course, it's of course PCI compliant. Um, some other stuff here, we'll stay on the screen for a second. EBIS charge is kind of an all-in-one solution. Uh, you can use it as a module attachment to an ERP or accounting system. You can use it as a standalone virtual terminal into your credit card orders. It plugs into most of the major shopping carts out there, uh, Bird Dog, Sniperdyne, Magento, Volusion, just to name a few popular ones. You can use it on an Android phone, an iPhone, a tablet. Uh, we have a point of sale system that we can show you up <laughs> plug it into. So EBIS charge is kind of the all-in-one solution that you would need to run your um, your business the way that you, you would want to. And we would, of course, come up with a plan that would best fit your business. Some of our team here at Century, like what you would get by using our solution processing with us, you'd have an, an account manager, someone like me or Steven or somebody else that manages your account. Your, uh, your, they'll be your first point of contact if you need anything. Uh, we have an in-house development team here, in-house chargeback management team here, and the best part, in-house customer support. You're not going to be calling in support and talking to Peggy over in the Ukraine. Everything is handled here in-house. Uh, so if you have an issue, give us a call, and we're going to fix it. So with that being said, I think um, we talked a little bit about the data security, EMV, PCI compliance, and how EBIS charge and our software integration works and functions within that space to achieve the data security that you will need as a company with the growing amounts of cards being taken across the United States. So at this point, I guess I can bring Greg back on here. We can open up for some questions and, and answers and uh, kind of see what everybody else has to say about this. Uh, sounds good, Bryce, Steve, thank you so much. Uh, we did get a couple questions that came in over chat. Um, I'm going to go ahead and also unmute everyone. Um, we'll try to do organized anarchy. If you have a question, please feel free. Don't hesitate uh, or be shy. Uh, we'll get to everybody. Um, so I am now unmuting everybody. Um, one of the questions that came in on um, the chat was uh, one of the people online, I guess they're currently using Progression, uh, McCullough Progression. They're on PC charge, and they're kind of wondering what happens on October 1st. Um, are they suddenly not PCI compliant, or is there anything that specifically that they really need to worry about? Well, they're not PCI compliant now because they're using uh, PC charge. So PC charge is not a compliant solution, meaning all the card information is stored locally on their server. Um, it's not cloud-based. eBiz charge is cloud-based, so that means that you have to log into a, a website with a username and login, which holds all the cart information. So currently, they're not compliant now. As far as what happens on October 1st, on October 1st, PC charge will no longer work. It will not settle a batch. There's no support for it. So if you don't have a solution in place by October 1st, you're not going to be able to process credit cards. Um, kind of stay in that same um, that same arena to a certain degree. 
Um, we have a customer uh, or a person on on um, on the call that's wondering if the information is stored on their servers, but they're using firewall and antivirus and, and things like that. Um, doesn't that protect them from liability in the event of, a, of an attack or a hack or something like that? Sure, and this is Stephen. I'll handle that one. So that is, it's great to have the firewalls and antivirus. That's certainly much better than leaving PC charge um, on the server with no protection or encryption of any kind. And that does go a long way um, in actually reducing the amount of fraud that occurs, right? Obviously, if you make it more difficult for someone to gain access to that data, it's less likely that they will. That being said, with regards to PCI compliance itself, PC charge in the fact that it's server-based, regardless of what you put around it in terms of firewalls and antivirus, is by its very nature not PCI compliant. So it's not like, you know, we're not, we're not the scare police here. There, there aren't PCI riot cops running around the United States trying to catch you with a non-PCI compliant solution. That said, if something were to happen and someone were to get around those firewalls or antivirus, um, the liability would 100% be on you as a business because PC charge is not a PCI compliant solution. So it's better, but it's not PCI compliant. Okay, we just had one come in that's it's interesting. Um, uh, apparently, uh, someone looked at the solution a little while back, and um, they discovered that, uh, let's see here, the only way they could get it to work with McCola was to give their shipping clerks access to the internet, um, and the boss apparently was not willing to uh, consider that was a non-starter. Is there a workaround um, for that, or is there a way for them to be able to process without having to access the internet? Yeah, I mean, I think the best option there would be, I mean, I, I know here at our work, our boss has a filter on the websites that we can go to and all like the non-business related things such as Facebook and Twitter and those kind of sites we don't have access to. So yes, they'll have to have access to the internet, but uh, IT guy can probably turn on some kind of spam filter or some kind of way to n narrow down the quote unquote acceptable sites that the employees can access. Well, and also, this is Stephen. I'll jump in on that as well. Um, since you have both parties here at TiVo and Century that developed this, um, we actually have direct line of communication with the developer of the program. So um, to the person who asked that question, let's plan on connecting at the end of the call as well. Um, that's a kind of a specific situation. Normally, you know, the, the order entry people would have access to the Internet already on their workstation, so it's usually not something that we hear. But let's talk with our developers and, and get a dialogue going. I'm sure there's some sort of a workaround that we can come up with um, by getting everyone on the line. And there's actually a couple people asked this question. Um, okay. And Bryce, you actually touched on this a little bit already, um, but there, there's questions about the e-commerce platforms and, and how the integration works with basically a third-party e-commerce platform that's already integrated into McCola. How does the how does the integration work when they have something like that set up? Absolutely. So. Uh, how it would work is the sale would be processed through the e-commerce site and the uh, integration to it actually creates a sales order and dumps it inside of exact uh, a cola whether if you have the card set up to pre-authorize at the shopping cart or e-commerce level then it would come in as a pre-authorized card you'd have to go in when you're ready to ready to ship and manually capture that payment. The other way to do it is you would have it set up at the shopping cart level to come in as a straight sale so it captures a sale and at that point it would come over as a paid invoice when it comes into Exact Macola. Okay, cool. Um, I have one more chat question. Um, if someone, let's say if someone's on progression or they're currently on ES, um, they sign up for the integration, and then down the road they decide to, you know, update to EM10. Um, is uh -huh. there a re-implementation um, fee involved? Is it, is it a difficult transition after they make that upgrade to a newer platform? No, it's a simple uh, 
a transition. It, it, it would just be we would have to reinstall the module onto the new software that they got. So um, we would actually run the progression and let's say the EM10 side by side um, until uh, there's until they're ready to fully m migrate over. That way there's no lapse in credit card processing time in between. So un so we could install on both, have both running. Once you're fully moved over, then we turn off the old one and keep the new one going. But as far as uh, what's involved in it, it's about an hour, hour and a half installation and maybe some training if the software is different on the front end. All righty. Um, well, that was the chat question. If there's anyone on the line that has a question they'd like to ask directly, uh, speak now or forever hold your peace. Sounds like um, that was that. So well, and, and Greg, this is Stephen. I, I just wanted to jump in and add on to one of the chat questions that we got at the very beginning, if that's okay. Um, sure, yeah. <clears throat> So I realized thinking back on the way we answered those first couple questions, it may have come off a bit harsh. I just wanted to talk a little bit more and in more detail about PC Charge. So PC Charge, although it is no longer PCI compliant and Verifone, its creator, has realized that and is ending life on it in a couple months, um, PC Charge at one time was PCI compliant. So you know, even a decade ago, even we at Century Business Solutions were setting up some of our customers with PC Charge. What's happened is that over time, as credit card payment methods have evolved and hackers and criminals have evolved with the times to, to keep up and, and continue to intercept customer credit card data, PCI compliance rules have changed as well. So <clears throat> while, PCI com or while PC Charge is not compliant, it was in the past, so we don't want to demonize those folks who are using PC Charge. We just really want to emphasize that PC Charge is no longer going to function. It's not PCI compliant now, meaning that there's a longer term deadline to get off PC Charge, which is October 1st, when it literally stops functioning. But really, the urgency is there now because every day that passes, while unlikely, there could be a breach of your system. And if you're using PC Charge, your customers could end up um, blaming you and liability would fall on you as a business for not using a PCI compliant solution and, and leaving that credit card data in a vulnerable state. And uh, it's gotten to the point, <laughs> because there is no other option within Exact Cola other than PC Charge until the introduction of our product, where this product was uh, very well received in Boca Raton at Exact Evolve a few months back. In fact, uh, Bryce and I both spoke with a number of folks at Exact, uh, actual employees of Exact, who mentioned that they are going to instruct their support folks to direct the Exact Direct customers to this product if they find out they're using PC Charge or if they inquire about how to process credit cards in Exact Macola. Uh, they're, they're almost, without officially embracing at this point, they're embracing this product because it is tokenized, it is fully PCI compliant, and it really is less expensive in terms of transactional costs as well. So um, there's urgency to get off PC Charge. You're not a bad company. If you're using PC Charge, let's have a conversation about it. Let us help, and we can help uh, take that liability off of you. Uh, on, along those lines, we actually just got not another one coming in over chat. I guess people are a little bit shy, but <laughs> to, <laughs> no to worries. Speak up, but um, but they're wondering if they can run like let's say they're on PC Charge right now or just another gateway. Um, is it possible for them to run both the eBiz Charge and their current payment gateway um, side by side, or is it kind of a one or the other type of deal? You can, you can run it side uh, side by side to test it out. Um, you know, uh, what what we do, like let's say you're interested in, in this, what we would do is we would open up a merchant account for you. We would go through the installation and training with you, and then we put the ball in your court about when you feel comfortable closing out your other account and processing only with us. We actually encourage our merchants to keep their account open for a month or two for us to prove ourselves. Let us prove the savings to you. Let us prove the support to you. Let us prove how good we are before you cancel with your current uh, provider. All right. Um, 
righty. Um, this is uh, I'll give a going once, going twice to everyone on the call if there's any additional questions. Um, otherwise, um, you can see my contact information there on the on the screen. Uh, Stephen Bryce as well. Uh, if anyone has any questions they want to take offline, please don't hesitate to call us, to contact us, email. Um, aside from that, again, I want to thank everyone for joining us today. I want to thank Stephen Bryce. Uh, who did a great job today presenting uh, today's webinar. And with that being said, everyone get back to work. <laughs> Have a great day, and uh, we'll be in touch.